Wait. Let's see. Hello, hello. Let's make sure I'm sharing. I'm losing internet. Hello, Facebook. Let me know if you're there. It's like I'm um... Hello, Facebook. Thank you for joining me tonight. Hi, Dr. Jamila. Give me a minute to share. Keep saying that my internet is going in and out. I just want to make sure. Reload my page. Can't hear me? Okay. Go back to Schmard. Okay, let's see. Can you hear me now? Okay, Marshall, you can hear me. Dr. Jamila, can you hear me now? Can everybody else hear me? I'm having, sounds like I'm having a little bit of trouble with my internet, it kept going in and out. Hi guys, I see five people on. Let me know if you can hear me. Awesome, yay. Okay, thank you all so much for your patience. Thank you for joining me on this Monday night. You know who I am. I am Dr. Terilyn, your board certified family physician, speaker, author, coach. I help women who are dissatisfied with their current careers make pivotal changes so that they can create the lives that they desire. My purpose is to inspire, encourage, and uplift. So please follow me at Dr. Terrellon, that's D-R-T-E-R-R-A-L-O-N on all social media platforms. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. I am coming to you from beautiful Upper Marlboro, Maryland, just outside of DC in the beautiful DMV. Thank you, Tamika, for joining me. I appreciate your time. Hey, and thank you, Dr. Jamila. Thank you, my lovely Marshall. Thank you, everybody. So I thought I would come to you tonight just to share a little bit. I said that I'm a career coach and I haven't talked to you. I was looking back through my streams and I haven't talked to you much about my career or alternative careers or what my purpose is. So I'm Dr. Terrell a board certified family physician. And my purpose is to, I say it is to uplift and encourage. And I really do mean that. And I started this coaching business because I am passionate about letting women know that and not just women, but all individuals know that it's okay to think outside the box. 
I started on this journey to become a doctor. I still love it. But I also want you to know that it's okay to think non-traditionally. What do I mean by that? We, when we think about uh, traditional jobs, oftentimes we have this picture in our minds of what it is to be uh, what that particular job entails. So we go to school, we go to you know, elementary school, we go to high school, we go to college um, if it requires that, and we go to grad school if it requires that. And we, we, we are on this particular specific journey. And I just want to encourage us, if 2020 has taught us anything, that it is, it's okay to pivot. It's okay to change the narrative, especially if there are certain needs in your life. If there are, if you have certain needs, uh, changes in your family, uh, if there are certain priorities, or if you change your mind, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to change your path. And if you're, and if you also don't love it anymore or the same way, or if it's not what you thought it would be. So that's what happened to me in medicine. So, and I, let me just, let me just say, I still love medicine. I just love it differently. So just a little bit about me. I am from a small town, Macon, Mississippi. Love Macon. Some of you are on here are from Macon. It's a small town, 2,500 people. Love it, love it, love it. And partially grew up outside of Jackson also. So make, my mom uh, is from Macon, Mississippi. My dad is from uh, outside of Jackson, um, Florence, Mississippi. So it's, um, well, the, the address is Braxton, but anyway, Rankin County, Mississippi, love it. So Mississippi is my home. And I had this idea of becoming a small town family doctor. So I was on the straight and narrow path to become a family physician. And what a family physician is trained to do is take care of people from the cradle to the grave. Continued on that path, went to lovely HBCU, Tougaloo College in Mississippi, went to medical school at Brown University in Rhode Island, had a great experience there. And then um, got married, um, oh, sorry, went to residency in Houston because I wanted to be warm, got married. And then as life continued, then also came to the DC area. But, you know, then I got a family, my family expanded. And my, also my idea of what family medicine and medicine also changed. And so from that time that I wanted to be a doctor and what I actually saw once I got into the field also changed my concept of how I wanted to practice medicine. So what happened was I grew up in a very rural area, but then I started to train and practice in a very urban area. So the needs were different, the demands were different. Couple that with the fact that I had a growing family and the needs of that family was different than my idea had my idea of how I wanted to practice medicine changed. And medicine also changed as well. There were more demands for for paperwork and there were more constraints as to what we could do. So in Texas, I was taught to deliver I was I had the I was taught to deliver babies and there was more um, encouragement to take care of women and their babies. But as I moved to a different geographical region region, that was not the preference. So, again, had to pivot. So, again, I so I got a little I was a little bit frustrated and then also I started to have, I started to rethink, okay, I think I want to change the way I practice medicine. Also, the needs of my population in DC were very different. So my, the needs of my population in DC were, they were different in such a way that they didn't need they needed a little bit more from me, and how should I say? Um, their their needs were more social, so they they needed more things like 
um, they needed more support in getting, uh, they needed, uh, how should I say, more, uh, more the social determinants of health. So we were figuring out more things like how to keep their lights on, how to get, uh, so that they could keep, say their asthma, um, their nebulizer for their asthma. We were doing things like how to get proper food because in the in the area where I worked, there was only one grocery store. Um, people who had um, chronic diseases, they didn't have access to the specialist in that part of DC. So it was always a transportation issue. So I was always working more administratively to get those things needed. So I was, I was frustrated more with the social work issues. So I decided that I wanted to work more administratively on those things. So that changed my idea of, of the things that I wanted to work on. So I wanted to work on that side. And usually that led me to the insurance side of things. So I decided I wanted to work on the resources, the business side of medicine. So I decided I wanted to have more autonomy. So I started looking into that and that's how I ended up doing more administrative medicine, which meant that we needed to have more doctors advocating for our patients on the insurance side. So I wanted to talk to you about changing, about pivoting. And I, I started to worry about what people would think if I didn't see patients anymore. And so I wrestled with that. And guess what? I found that I, I, I had to get over that because I actually did it. I found that I was happier actually advocating for my patients. Even though I wasn't seeing the patients directly, I felt better that I was able to make the decisions more on the insurance side because I was advocating I had that I I felt that I had more power advocating for patients, um, advocating for their needs because I was actually on the decision making side. So now I could say to the people who were not doctors who are making the business decision saying, yes, I have been a physician treating that patient. Yes, they need this. I understand the medical side. I understand that you're trying to save money, but it will save you more in the long run if you approve this service for this patient. So I want to talk to you about things that people can do with their medical degree that may not involve direct patient care. So one of those things is something that I do, which is administrative medicine. Some people may call it um, insurance work. Some people may call it medical director. So my title is medical director. That's one of the hats that I wear. So another thing is being a medical writer. So if you are, if you go into medicine and you are, you want to take a side gig or you need to take some time off from medicine, then another thing you can do is become a medical writer. Has anybody ever heard of Michael Crichton? That's, and I'm gonna type it in the chat. Michael Who can tell me who Michael Crichton is? Hi, Dr. Bobby, thanks for joining me. So good to see you. Dr. Bobby is an OBGYN in, are you in Ohio, Dr. Bobby? I'm so glad, she's, she's usually catching babies somewhere. <laughs> She works all night. Thank you for joining me. Uh, so Dr. Um, Dr. Michael Crichton, he's usually not known as Michael Crichton. He, he went to Harvard Medical School. A lot of people don't know this, but he wrote Jurassic Park. He wrote a lot of other things, but his most famous work by far is Jurassic Park. So that's what I mean by if you have a dream or if you have some other way, if you're a creative person and you get to a point where you you discover, you know, I know I was on the path to something else, but this is what I really want to do. And you're able to, to, to explore that feeling, then do that because that's what Dr. Michael Crichton did. And look what, you know, he, unfortunately he passed away from cancer, but 
Michael Crichton wrote Jurassic Park, along with other things like Congo, which was also made into a movie. I think well, I think Ice Cube was in that, right? Um, so Dr. Michael Crichton. Also, consulting. Now, consulting is a huge umbrella, but what that really means is somebody, I bet all of you know a consultant. Uh, a lot of teachers that we've gone to school with have become consultants after they retire. And what that simply means is somebody is paying you for your expertise. That's all that is. So you just become your own boss. You can, you can become your own boss, which is an independent contractor. And a company pays you for what you think, for, what, for your opinion for your opinion, your experience, for your thoughts on their product and their service. They just want to know what you think and what your experience has been. And it's very valuable to them. Bio, for, for doctors, it's biotech. It's usually a biotech company or a public relations company, marketing company. A lot of times, and even if it comes as little as a, um, you can, a lot of doctors make money just from answering surveys. They will, they will, uh, 75 to hundred dollars. It takes 10 minutes to answer a survey, but then you can also make really good money. I have seen up to $750 an hour. Yes. And that's just from consulting on a big project because that's what, and if you can command that and you can show that you have a track record for giving solid advice and turning a pro profit for a company, you can command that much. Now, because I'm a career coach, I, this, a lot of this information is transferable to other, to other fields. So like I said, I know a lot of retired teachers, even from my hometown who have become educational consultants. So you can pretty much become a consultant in, in any field, especially if you have done graduate work in that field or you have, if you have a, a good amount of, plenty of years of experience and a track record for relationships and for being consistent in your particular field. So consulting. So, so far we've talked about what I do, which is administrative medicine or being a medical director, number one. Number two, being a medical writer. And number three, uh, consulting. So, and I'll give you number four, which became really popular. Thank you, Dr. Bobby. Telemedicine. That became really popular during COVID. And I will tell you, Dr. Tisha Rowe, I met her a few years ago. She was really ahead of the curve. I didn't understand the, I didn't understand quite what she was doing. I didn't understand the, her, the need for what she was doing. She really had some foresight. She's down in Houston. And I, I know that because I trained in Houston. That's where I did my residency, which is training after after medical school. So she was trying to get docs to come on board to do telemedicine, which is doing video, doing visits like we are doing now over the computer. She was also trying to enroll patients to say, hey, this is a really, really convenient way to see your doctor if you have something minor. You know, you have a cold, you won't miss work. Or you, you know, have maybe a urinary tract infection, you already know what it is, something very minor, and you can describe and talk to your doctor about it. So uh, my hat's off to her because she was very forward thinking. She's a, a wonderful businesswoman, and I couldn't, I didn't grasp it, but I, I loved her tenacity. I loved her spirit, and I was always impressed with her. And look at her, she was ahead of the game. So when COVID hit, she was ready. I, so telemedicine, telemedicine, telemedicine visits were up 80% in 
at one point during quarantine, right? Because doctor's offices, a lot of doctor's offices aren't even seeing my doctor's office. I have my, my doctor's office isn't even seeing people in in um, in the office. It has to be super urgent. Um, so they aren't bringing people in unless it is absolutely uh, necessary. So we're doing, if it can absolutely be done via a telemedicine visit, that's how it's being done. So it has gone down a bit. Telemedicine visits have gone down about 30% during May, but that has not increased the number of in-person visits, meaning people aren't going back to the doctor necessarily right now. We are in August and still they have not seen those visits, at least in primary care, increase, meaning people have been seeing their doctors via telemedicine, but they haven't been going back to the doctor. So that's a very lucrative place to be right now in case you are, that's a area that you want to visit. And the last area, the last thing you can do with your medical degree is if you don't want to work in a traditional office, you can also be sort of like what we what we think of as a substitute teacher. You can fill in for a doc who wants to go on vacation or if they need a doc for uh, just a short period of time. It's called locum tenens in the place of a temporary place of it's a latin term but it really means it's a temporary doc you can you can, you can be a temp you can be a doc who's a temp and yes we have those so if they have a temporary need for a doc where they need to rev up their numbers if they need them just for a little while um, you can do it for a few days you can do it for a few weeks and that's that's a wonderful lifestyle that some docs live they just and they pretty much work when they want to so i gave all of this information, it's not for doctors a lot. Like I said, it can be for any healthcare professional. I've seen this in education. There are traveling docs, there are traveling nurses, there are tra traveling educational professionals. Um, I've, I've seen this in so many fields. There are traveling consultants. So I encourage you, if you are not, currently satisfied in the career that you want or the job that you want, it's okay. It's okay to look around. It, I, I encourage you to think outside the box. Create the life that you want. Create the life that you want. Uh, incur I encourage you to think about becoming an independent contractor, being your own boss. It's possible to do that. Like I said, 2020 has been the year of change. It has been the year of really rethinking your purpose and rethinking your path. And I, I challenge you to do that and to really take control. It's not too late to do that and come up with a plan, come up with a plan. So again, my purpose is to encourage, empower, and uplift and know that if there's something that you really want to do, you are equipped to do that. You are equipped to do that. And if there are skills, extra skills that you have to learn to, to do what you want to do, then go out and do that. Again, you have the power to do that. So thank you all so much for your time. I really have enjoyed being there. Let me know if you have any questions. Oh, Tamika says it's a timely message. Well, I hope it's helpful for you, and I'm happy to talk to you more. You can just send me a DM. Love to talk to you. Um, thanks, Dr. Bobby. Thanks, Dr. Jamila, for your time. And happy belated birthday. Dr. Jamila just had a birthday yesterday. Anybody else? Let me know. Any questions? Well, I am going to get out of here. Thanks for your time. I am Dr. Terrell, and your board certified family physician, speaker, author, coach through my coaching programs. I help women who are 
dissatisfied with their current careers, make pivotal changes so that they can create the life that they desire. My purpose is to empower, encourage, and uplift. So if I have said anything today that has encouraged you or has connected with you, please follow me at Dr. Terralyn. That's D-R-T-E-R-R-A-L-O-N on all social media platforms. Please like and share this with any of your friends on your pages. I try to be here every Monday at nine or nine-ish, depending on what time I can get my kids in the bed, <laughs> but trying to be consistent. So I love you guys for joining me and taking time out of your day. Love you. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Hi, Kimberly. Thank you for joining me. And kisses to the baby and your husband. <laughs>